Welcome to track number 13 of Life in the Church. That God is helping me to go to poor places. Amen. And I know that God is going to bless you as you help us to go to the poorer places. I've always thought, that's how come I became friends with Reverend Saki. Because he also loved to preach and want to do the work of God and to preach in every village and town and all the poor places that we can. And I'm glad that years have gone by. You see, faithfulness means that you are the same. And we are still after that vision. And our heart is still there. And we believe that we are going to continue. Amen. Now, um, where are we? Okay. A leader, I'm going to share with you a few signs. Tell somebody a few, just a few signs of disloyalty. Tell the person, I'm, I tell the person next to you, I'm going to watch out for these things in you, my brother. Amen. Uh, what does it say? Number one. Okay, I'll start from the back. Now, Loyalty is something you can use at your workplace. You can use for marriage. You can use for anything. Okay. Now, how do you know when someone is not loyal? All right. There are a few things, and this is a very short session, but I just feel I should do a bit. So, let's just do a little bit of it, and then we'll end. Amen. I believe that the Lord has done many great things, and we are blessed, and the church is going to increase and go forward. Amen. And also, I believe the time will come, we will have, be able to have camp without so much, you know, like a short camp. Like we come on Friday, and then we go on Saturday. You don't even miss a day at work. You go on Sunday morning, like that. Just at night, a whole day, another night, and then Sunday morning we leave. Without too much planning. You get it? The planning shouldn't be too much for camp meeting. Amen. So, number one, watch out for somebody who has not been tested by time. Amen. It is a sign of someone who can be disloyal. You see, people who have just come saying nice things, well, I understand what I'm saying, is nice. For Emmanuel to show interest. Amen. But you need to test it with time. Do you see? So if for instance you are starting a church, you don't just appoint, okay, Irene is the worship leader, Sharon is the announcer. We don't know whether Irene is going to stay around for long. You don't have to quickly make appointments of people. We have to see, let time go by. Opokizan also, I've seen you in Zurich. First, I, I was remember when they told me, so they said, Opoku, do you remember the football? I said, oh, yeah, Opoku, said, he's in the church, really. I said, well, I saw him, two, three. Now I'm very used to seeing you. You get it? Because at the time has gone by, you are still around. You get what I'm saying? So you become more sure of somebody who is still around after a long time. Because you see, if you are friends with somebody, the initial friendship, the person brought the right leg. But he still has a left leg to bring. So after some time, when the left side also comes, then you begin to see there's another side of it. So actually, my best friends are my oldest friends. I really enjoy old friendship. I don't like breaking friends at all. If I know you, I like to know you for a long time. Because if I've been with you for a long time, you know, you, you are sure of me, and I'm also sure of you. You get it? Because it takes time to show things. If you know just somebody for just a year or somebody for just a short time, suddenly you go. So if ladies, if somebody proposes, you say, I want to marry you. And you just see the person, Emmanuel, you just see the person at the camp. You, you can't just 
immediately after this session go and say okay pearl the way bishop has put us together so many times i don't know whether it's prophetic <laughs> pearl must say i am not sure let some time pass and let time go by time 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 even a couple of quarrels are also not bad because with a couple of quarrels we see how you resolve your quarrels because you see quarrels will come but it's the way sometimes you solve your quarrel some people are so beastly animalistic when they are i mean a problem you are so there's no need even if we don't agree we don't have to be enemies at all we just flow along i don't think this i don't problem let's just keep on moving Sometimes when you go out of the door, somebody just, huh, and he goes, and then he holds the door, and bangs the door, pop! Then when he gets out, he remembers that he left something in the room. <laughs> yes, the door that you were, you see, don't bang the door loudly. You may need to come back to that same room. So, even the way a person solves his quarrels, Tells you how you can relate. I know Mary. Mary is angry with me. I know how I'll solve it. I know what I'll tell her. Just tell her one or two things and then she'll cool down. I've been with her for a long time. I've eaten in her house. She has made, uh, I always remember, she's made some the garlic bread for us. I didn't eat some before. I said, what, Mary, what is this? Said, garlic bread. It's ah, powerful. <laughs> I've gone to a house after church many times. We have watched television, video. We have all been together. Not yesterday. For some years and years, I'm more relaxed. When I, say, I don't feel I have to say something. I have to do If I do this, then if I do this. Oh, I don't have that feeling. I feel okay, relaxed. Yeah. I don't want tension. <laughs> I don't enjoy tension. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So time. So one of the signs of a, a, a person you can trust is sometimes time has gone by. You've seen happy, sad, down, up, rich, poor, with a job, without a job. You see how they behave over a long time. Stop. He's a good guy. So ladies, when somebody wants to marry you, and you know sometimes we, both the brothers and then the sisters, we like mysterious things. Oh yeah. They like and un- unknown, you see the person and the person is coming. And she just walks into the church. And, ah! This is her. Meanwhile, there is somebody here that you are chatting with all the time. And you know the person better. Marry your friend. Don't marry James Bond. Marry your friend. Don't marry some unknown mystery person. I was talking to a mother one day. She was so sad. I said, why? My son is dead. What happened? My son married a lady. And after a few uh, months, she started to have diarrhea. And I said, what was the diarrhea? I said, the diarrhea was HIV. Fully blown. Just spilling like that. Just spilling. After a few months, she died. And she said, then a few months later, then her son also died. And the son was a pastor. Perhaps he didn't know who he was marrying. He just saw her coming. Na, 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 na. And you are coming to church. And you, you just see the first two weeks. One pastor was telling me, he said, Look, I saw my wife just two weeks and I married her. He said to me, You you are lucky. You knew your wife, your wife was your friend in school. I just saw my wife for two weeks and I married her. When he said it, I was feeling sad. He said the tremblings I've had in my house, the fightings and the shakings. 
I didn't know what I was marrying. And I went to visit the pastor and I saw a picture of his wife. And I said, wow. You know, these kind of pictures and the person looks very beautiful. And I was saying, ah. When he saw her within two weeks, he was shivering. And brother came up and he said, a great change and miraculous is happening in my life. I was shivering. I was shivering. He was shivering when he saw her. So when I saw the picture, I said, ah, uh -uh." it was her beauty. It was so moved. Because I looked at the picture on the wall, I said, wow, she was really beautiful. But the beauty, there was a beast in the beauty. Beauty and the beast within. (laughs) And when the wife manifests, when the manifestation comes, phanerosis, when it comes, it's not easy at all. So if you want to have something and choose something that is faithful, choose something that you know for some time. Because all of us have got the left, I've got the right, I've got the back, I've got the front. After some time, you will be sure. Because all of us will quarrel. All of us will have our problems. All about even how we come across it, how we move on. That tells you a lot about a person. So, look for people. If you've known me for some time, try to know me. If you've known me for 10 years, try to be my friend after 20 years still. Do, do you get what I'm trying to say? Don't quarrel with me after 12 years and say, I don't want to see this guy again. No! I want to know Jonathan Fayambola after 20 years still. I want you to be at all. Your children will be getting married and I'll be at your children's weddings. Amen! Oh, you don't think so? Yeah! That's how it should be. Long friendship, long relationship, something that you are sure about. On and on and on and on and on. That is it. When you are an old man, then you also be an old man. <laughs> Do you remember when we were at Beatinbeck? <laughs> we were going with our walking stick like that. Do you remember when we were at Beatinbeck? Beatinbeck, Beatinbeck, Beatinbeck. Then we will be sitting down and discussing our funerals in the future. Where we would like to be buried. <laughs> I'd like to be buried in a mountain. I'd like to be buried in the sea. I'd like to be... Because we know that the next... When at a certain age, the next major thing is to die. It's not a wedding or outdoor, you know, anything. It's to die. <laughs> you don't enjoy what I'm saying. <laughs> The next one, a, 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 a sign that you must watch out, something you must watch out for with, this loy- with loyalty and disloyalty is a person who does not contribute in a joint effort which is intended to bless and appreciate their pastor. A person who does not join, you know, when we are trying to appreciate the pastor, you know, person doesn't enjoy it. He doesn't join. Let's say we decide that we are going to bless Pastor uh, Seleshi. And then we decide that we are not going to uh, we, we decide we are going to give. And then somebody, some people would like to give but some would not give. You get it? Of course, depending on what your situation is. But there are some people who are not happy when pastors are blessed. There's something wrong with you. Ask the person, is there something wrong with you? Huh? Why don't you want your pastor to be blessed? You know, I've come to see the people who really love me, they want me to be blessed. 
They want me to live in a better house. They want me to have a, a better car. They are always trying to give me more things and trying to put. And I always say, no, 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 no. I don't. It's, it's too much. I sometimes ask them, are you normal? Are you out of your mind? Why should you think of such a thing? I say, I don't like such thing. I don't enjoy. I don't feel happy. I don't appreciate it. One day somebody said to me, I myself will come and buy a Benz for you. I will buy it for you. If you will not buy it for yourself, I will buy it for you. Those who love me. When Jesus was sitting down, a woman came with her hair. Huh? I have not seen it before, you know. I have been a pastor for some years. I've, nobody has ever done that to me. If a woman were to do that, I wonder if my wife would be excited about it. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> and she brought her special valuable thing to her. For somebody, five francs is what he has. Uh, the alabaster. Somebody, it's five million. And she came to Jesus and she poured her expensive thing. And she, she used her hair. She used her hair. You know? And she wiped her her his feet. Use her hair. Use her hair. I, I, I'm even afraid to ask any of the sisters who have long hair to ask them to come on stage so that I will use their hair to explain it. See if there's any sister with long hair near you <laughs> anywhere. Is there anybody with long hair near you? Uh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> they don't want to. So, I am Jesus, and there's a woman here. And I'm sitting now, my, my legs are here, my feet are here, and she's wiping, wiping. Are you coming? <laughs> alright. Okay, don't worry. It's alright. It's alright. It's alright. She's wiping. Wiping. It's alright. You are too late. You've missed your opportunity. <laughs> Uh, you see, I'm, I'm shivering. <laughs> oh, please, please, please. I beg you, I beg you, I beg you. <laughs> I, I, I was shivering, I tell you. <laughs> A great and miraculous thing was happening. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> it's not easy. And Jesus was just receiving it, and he was just, and somebody was sitting there because he's not married. That's why. <laughs> and then one of the pastors, in the corner, he was thinking, "How do you waste?" Waste money on somebody's feet. A waste of money. You know? A person who doesn't contribute and he thinks it is a waste of money for the pastor to be blessed. Some Nigerians, we have a lot of Nigerians in our church in Ghana. They were telling me, say, uh, Bishop, if you were in Nigeria, when you are coming to church, they will clap for you. The people in the area. <laughs> he said, for these big, big buildings you have built here, and all these things you are doing here, they would have held you. 
but I'm nobody hails me when I'm coming to church. You must learn to appreciate the work your pastor does for you. And a person who is not happy, you see your pastor's card, and the first thought that comes to your mind is that, where did he get the money from? Where do you think he got the money from? What are the possible sources of the money? Why is your mind working in a bad way? Does he have to explain everything? Somebody gave me one something so expensive. Cost a lot of money. It was a present. Just because of the explanations that I will have to give. Or anybody who sees it in the explanation, I don't, I'll not even use it. Because of the extra, I just have, because everywhere I go, I have to say, it was a present, it was a present, it was a present, it was a present, it was a present. What is that? It's because of negative thoughts that are in people's minds. People who don't want to appreciate the pastor. Watch out for such people amongst you. Note them carefully. They are dangerous people. They don't love God. If you honor the man who God has sent, you are honoring God. And if you honor that man, you have honored the Lord. If you receive him, you have received the Lord. Amen. The next one. A person who has not been involved in practical work, practical work, is someone who can easily be disloyal. Somebody who's not been involved in practical work. Practical ministry work. Practical work of the ministry. Because you see, when you are not involved in practical ministry work, you have some ideas. You know, you have theories. You, you give me a theory. You say that Jesus did this and Paul did this. And this is what the Bible says and that's what the Bible says. And you will tell me, you learned this in Bible school and you have... But you haven't done anything. You have never witnessed to anyone before. And, and you will say that, oh, if you are a good leader, people will not leave. If you are a good leader, this will not happen. If you are a good leader, this... And you have, because practically you've not done anything before, you have all your ideas. But when you start, welcome to the practical way. Then your ideas begin to change. And I'm a very practical person. I like to do practical things. Let's do the thing and let it work. It's easy to theorize. But when you start... It's not easy. Many churches cannot grow beyond 10 people. Pastors have tried and it doesn't work. It's not easy. You can have theories. So it's good for you to be... Teresa, I want you to be involved in practical ministry work. You, 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 your, your respect for me will even change. All of you pastors who are involved in the work, you love me more. Because as you do the practical things, you realize that... <laughs> Bishop, it's not easy. And you'll be doing that. Uh, this man here has tried to. Then you do his for say, Hey! Is that what he's going through? In my little corner here, this is what somebody is telling me. How much more? All this. I can imagine the thing this guy has had. When I see the little sacrifice that I've made, and I think of Jesus as he was planning that I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to this place. I'm going, I can't imagine it. It looks so great. It's so calculated. I'm going to die. I will suffer. I will... One day he was praying and he said that the cup that my father has given me, shall I not drink it? I could feel the pain Jesus was feeling as he was thinking about this thing. Hey! Shall I not drink it? He said, what, what can I do? I have to drink it. I have to drink it. The cup my father has given me. Can I, will I say that I won't drink it? I have to drink it now. I have to do it. Hallelujah. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, be practical. I want you to be people who play instruments. Learn instruments. You get it? Learn to sing. You see a course singing beautifully here? Those who have not sung before, they'll be listening and they'll say, I think that um, well, uh, there, may, there may be some improvement that we can, uh, improvement that we can be making. And then... Uh, uh, perhaps at times you go higher and then lower. Then the place that you are singing, ooh, you should sing it. Ah, you haven't sung before. Come, please, and try just two bars of singing. You are criticizing my preaching. 
You haven't preached. Reverend Saki always tells us he really wanted to preach when he was in school. He said, I've got, I want to preach, I want to preach. Then one day, the person who was supposed to preach there for the school, he didn't come. So they came to the tone. Would you like? He said, Oh, this is what I've been. I, 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 this is my chance. I know God has called me. The hour has come. Father, glorify thy name to thy servant. Glorify thy name to thy servant. It's the hour. Because he has been sitting down and watching. And so he stood up and he went to preach. And he preached and preached and preached and preached and preached and preached with all his heart. Oh, 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 oh. People were quiet listening. And then he came to the end of the sermon. And then he looked at the watch. Five minutes. <laughs> Only five minutes had gone by. And you are supposed to preach for 45 minutes. And all your message and all your points and everything are finished in five minutes. And you thought it was a long time, but when you look at five minutes. So he started again. What will you do? You have to rewind. So he rewind to the beginning and started again. He preached with all his heart. The whole school was gathered. Finished the preaching. Look at that watch. Five minutes more. And it was hot. Sometimes you can even wee wee in your trousers. So he started again for the third time. And then the student said, Oh, we know that it is. Uh, he just had to end the thing and run away. He ran away. He ran away. <laughs> he ran into the darkness. It is easy to stand back, talk about my singing, talk about my voice. Talk about my preaching. Talk about how I preach. Talk about how you like it this way. Talk about how you don't understand it. Talk about how you understand it. Talk about how this and how this and that and that and that. Please come and stand here and preach from the morning through to the afternoon, to the evening, to the next day and continue and wake up and meet people. When you people went to sleep, I'm having meetings. One person after another, after another, till 3 a.m. Then I'll go and sleep. Then I'll wake up. They'll come and call me. Come and then you start again and continue and go on and that and fundraising and this and this and millionaire. Oh, come. Just join me. And I'm preaching with babies and crashes and all are shouting around us. Just for five minutes. And you'll see when you start preaching, sir, you will start either from the right or the left. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 and you see that one pastor was preaching, and suddenly somebody died in the church. So they called for the ambulance to come for the dead person. So when the ambulance came, they were looking for the person who had died. (laughs) And they didn't know who it was. They carried out eight people. When they carry one out, then he wakes up. It's not me. And they carried another one. Then on the way out, then he also wakes up. All of them were sleeping. They carried out eight people before they saw the one who was dead. If you are a pastor and you are preaching and people are sleeping and dying, can't you see? He was still preaching. Hallelujah. So, I need practical people who have preached. People are sleeping on you. People are this. People preach. One day a pastor was preaching. In a small church. Somebody got up and said, Ah, what is this? All oh, you're preaching. There are no verses. There are no scriptures in the preaching. What, what is that? No verses. No scriptures. Another one got up and said, I don't understand what you are saying. We don't understand what you are saying. All that you are saying, there are no verses in it. You can easily wee wee. <laughs> because you have been challenged. And they are telling you that there is no scripture. And they are preaching. 
And you see, when you have gone through, me, I've preached where people shout at me. Oh, yeah. I've preached where people are shouting at me back as I'm preaching. It's not easy. It's especially when you are not reading. They shout as you preach. They shout. I was preaching one day at the university and a, a lady shouted, How? Oh, what do you mean? It's this and that and that and that. And I became confused. I just had to continue, then continue preaching. One day I was preaching at a, 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 a dumb broadcast and a man got up from the top floor and I was preaching to the whole block and he shouted, What is wrong with you? <laughs> Why should you come at this time to come and disturb us? What, what do you mean? What do you mean by uh, what do you guys? If you have any opinion, come upstairs and tell us. Don't stand downstairs and shout as and I was preaching. God sent his son. This and the man was shouting nonsense. How do you stand here and shout and then come and stand there? If you have any he was shouting. So I was shouting, he was also shouting. It was not easy. And I preached and I tried to concentrate. I tried to present then at the point he stopped. And then I decided to pray after I said, I want to lead all of you who want to give your life to Christ. So I said, let us pray. Heavenly Father, then the man shall, God will never hear such a prayer. God doesn't listen to things he does not approve of. God does not answer, oh! Even the prayer, I was confused. Hallelujah. So, sometimes when you haven't done something practically, your opinions are different. And that's why we want practical people who have had hands-on experience. It's time for you to be practical. Hallelujah. Amen. The next one is a leader or a person who is always late for meetings. It's It's not a good sign. Because sometimes the person is just saying to himself, I don't need to hear what you are going to say at the beginning. Amen. And the last point. A person who poisons you about others. He poisons you. He poisons your mind. He says bad things about other people. I don't like people who say bad things about others. Amen. I don't like people who say bad things. It's not a good thing. Even if you don't like the person, or even you are hoping that something bad would happen to the person, and now somebody is saying bad things about the person to you, you must not. Are you listening to me? You must not flow with such a person. Because the person who is saying bad things about you, about others to you, will one day say bad things about you to others. Pastor Robert belonged to another church before he, when he was in England many years. He was in a church with another pastor and there were so many things that happened. For all these years that I've been with him, he has never, 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 never opened his mouth. Ever, ever, ever on this earth. I've never heard it. I have, and I talk with him a lot. And especially in those days, you know, because he was in England and when he was there, that was the church he was in. That church even does not exist today because of all the problems. Yet he has never opened his mouth to say anything bad about that place. And you see, that is a very important sign. There's somebody who is saying, oh, he's like this, he's this and that. No. It's a bad thing because that thing, it will turn on you. It's now on the other, but it will come on to you soon. So you must not accept such things in your life. And I don't trust, as soon as somebody starts to talk like that, I don't trust the person again. It's a very bad sign. You have bad things to say about Benny Hinn. Bad things to say about Bonke. Bad things to say about Joyce Mayer. Bad things to say about Juanita Bainer. Bad things to say about everybody. Ah, what is wrong with you? There's something good about everybody. Everybody. There's something good about everybody. Including me. Amen. Even if you 
if you, if you look at my faults, if you look closely, you'll see some good things. Amen. Are you there? Are you there? Okay. Let me give you a couple more. We are closing. This is the end, but... The next one. Leaders who do not, or people who do not attend certain meetings. People who are late, always is one. And the people who do not attend certain meetings. The Bible says in John 20, verse 24, But Thomas was not with them when Jesus came. You see, you always different when you are not at certain meetings. How many realize that those who are not at this camp have missed something? Their minds will be different. Their ideas will be different. What they've heard will be different. So you are always different when you are not at certain meetings. So watch for people who do not come for certain meetings. You say, there's a meeting. Let's all come. I say, oh, I can't come. Oh, I'm not coming. Well, there's a reason. And you realize that each stage of the service, each meeting that we have, makes you into a different person and a better person. Hallelujah. So watch out for people who, I, I'm not at this meeting. I'm not at that. And it's a bad sign. It's not a good thing. So I, I can't come on Tuesday. I can't, why can't you come on Tuesday? You are a sheep. Sheep come on Tuesday. They come on Wednesday. They come on Sunday. They are always available. That's the best kind of person. But not somebody who I can't be there. I can't come. Oh, I can't come for this. I can't come for that. The Bible says, but Thomas was not with them when Jesus came. Judas is carried out. When they were having supper, he was going out to look for money or whatever he was doing. He was a connection man, doing this, doing that, doing this. It's not a good thing. For me, I always notice those who are not at certain meetings. I always notice. One time I had a camp meeting. Recently I had a camp in America. One of our pastors didn't come. And I said, I said, I said look, I'm not a child. I said, me, when I was coming to America, and when, when, do you know when the camp meeting was? The camp meeting was just after September 11. And I was flying into New York. In fact, on Tuesday, I was leaving like on Thursday. On Tuesday, all the New York airports were closed. Because there was another, what do you call it, plane had just fallen down into JFK airport. Uh, into into uh, near Pastor Joel's house. A big, huge plane. And I said, me, I have come from my house, you see, I don't even feel like coming. As I've come, I don't feel like sitting on any aeroplane. Do you feel like sitting on planes? I've come from far away, carry take a plane to Amsterdam, Amsterdam to New York. I've come all the way, traveled here. And you, from here to here, you can't come. You tell me that something, something, something. Come on! Don't give me that crap. I'm not a child. I wasn't born last week. I was born some time ago. I have seen excuses and different kinds of excuses. People who decide that they are not coming is because they do not want to come. When something has been advertised, something is known. If you want it, if you really want it, you will make it. If you really want to come, you will come. No matter what job you, you have. If you want to put this aside, you will block it. And you watch these same people. Who say they can't come? They can't come for this. They can't, for that. They can't come for that. You see that they have time for so many other things. Maybe uh, you can take a day off of this, a day off of that, a day off of that. But they don't want to do it. They don't think it is important. Some people, oh, we can just come late. Or we don't have to come at all. I wasn't born yesterday and neither were you. Ask the person, please, how, when were you born last week? When, when, was your birthday last week? What am I saying? Is it correct or is it in the Bible? Judas is carried he went out with a bag. He went out. Going out to look for this. Going out for that. Moving around. And it's like when Jesus is telling them about the new wine and the old wine skins and all these things, he will not be there. Thomas was not there. That is why he didn't have the same faith. He said, I don't believe. I will never believe this. I'm not going with this. I don't accept this teaching. Because he wasn't there. Jesus had to come physically. He said, put your hand in my Put your hand. Put your hand. Put your hand. Put your hand. Do you believe it now? He needed a special something just for him to be aligned to us. So those of who are not here, we need some special shakings to get them into the flow of whatever we are in the flow of from the camp. Amen. Are you there? Alright. 
as a person next to you, is it uh, beginning to affect you? I'm losing shouts and uh, I'm losing amens. <laughs> the next one is a person who does not take notes whilst you are preaching. Watch such a person. Huh? You are preaching and it's like, <laughs> I know most of uh, the things that you are saying. And, uh, <laughs> I've been at uh, several camps meetings and then I have the original. I have the books. The next one, a person who does not smile and say amen when you are preaching. <laughs> Everybody is smiling, the person's face will be that. Everybody will be laughing. Such people are very, when you are preaching, you can be afraid. When you see their face, sometimes there are some people who come to church, I intentionally, if they are sitting on this side, I, I, most of the time I'll be preaching this way. <laughs> Because when I see their face, I'm so scared. I'm so frightened. I feel I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe I'm not preaching right. Maybe I'm doing something. Maybe I'm making a mistake. I'm doing something. I'm so frightened. So I just stay there and sit on this side. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So that I don't see them. <laughs> so say amen when the preaching is going on. Smile when there is something to smile about. My face is not the smiling type of faces. Ah, my face. You know, in Ghana, sometimes the police will stop you to ask you on the car on the road. A certain sister was driving, and then the police stop. When they flash like it means stop. So they flash like that, and then they stop, and then she rolled down the window. And then the policeman said, oh, but why have you squeezed your face? And she said, oh, that's how it is. <laughs> that is how it is. That is not how your face is. Don't bring yourself at all. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The next one is a person who has never been criticized. You must watch such a person. Somebody who has never been criticized. He will never understand you when they are criticizing you. If nobody has criticized you before in your life. So, when they are criticizing you, you don't even understand why. Why should they criticize? He must be doing something wrong. There is no smoke without fire. How can there be smoke without fire? Have you seen smoke when there is no fire? So they will quote that proverb, there is no smoke without fire. But I have seen smoke without a fire. Do you remember there was fire in, uh, is it Thailand? And then the smoke came to uh, Korea and other uh, places. Smoke and no fire. Smoke in Korea, no fire in Korea. So there can be smoke without fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. The next one. A, a person who does not keep promises. Watch such a person. Can easily be disloyal. Amen. Oh. I'll marry you and I don't marry you. I'll marry you and I don't marry you. I love you, baby. You are so beautiful. They look at you and they... Some people have words though. But it doesn't mean much. They will ask you. You are so beautiful. And then if you are a woman and you have not had such a word before you, you, you may be enjoying it and appreciating it. They will ask you, were you created or were you crafted? Your brother asked her sister, are you real? Yeah, the girl was happy. <laughs> she was so happy. She was enjoying it. But in the end, he didn't marry her. Are you created or are you crafted? He didn't marry her. Are you real? He didn't marry her. All the way. So a person who does not keep his promises. I'll marry you, but I don't marry you. I care, but I don't really care. I'll be with you to the end, but it's not to the end. I'll never divorce you, but I divorce you. Watch out. 
for such a person. Tell somebody, I'm going to be faithful. Tell the person next door, you can trust my word. Now, one of the very last points. A person who always gives excuses to justify himself. Okay. It's getting to closing time. The children themselves will control us, I tell you. Huh? Always giving excuses and justifying himself. You know, there are times you shouldn't try to give us. You just say, look, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I am wrong. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. That's all. End of story. Talking, talking, excuse. It was because of this. Because Just say I'm sorry. Just say it's true. Just say, look, you know, I'm wrong. Learn to say sorry. Sorry can help a lot of things. End quickly. I am sorry. I am sorry. Ask the person, do you find it difficult to say sorry? Tell the person, if you do, you are proud. You are proud. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The next one, a person who is angry when you correct him or her. There are some people who are always irritated when you try to say something. Huh? You try to correct, you say, huh? then you see that they are not happy. They start to squeeze their face. They become quiet. Then you ask, why are you quiet? Oh, nothing. I said, ah, why are you quiet? But after I talk to you about this, why has your attitude changed? When somebody talks to you about something, your attitude should not change. Otherwise, there is something wrong with you. What is wrong with you? Nobody can correct you. Nobody can say anything to you. Nobody can put you in order. Nobody can advise you. Nobody can tell you this is not the way. Nobody can help you. Nobody can make things better for you. You are always reactionary whenever somebody tries to correct you. It's a bad sign and it's a sign that you... Whenever you correct the corrector, you cannot receive correction. Write it down. Whenever you correct the corrector, you cannot receive correction. And most, most quarrels start like that. Instead of receiving the correction simply, the person who is being corrected wants to correct the corrector. And say, correct the way you are correcting me before I receive the correction. And that one becomes a debate. Why should I correct the correction? Uh, the, the, the correction? You say, you to correct the things I'm correcting. You are saying, correct the way or method of correcting. Correcting the corrector. I don't like the way you say that. If you are talking, don't shout. If you speak nicely, this and that, this and that, that, you have to wave your hand. Why do you wave your hand? Why do you squeeze your face? Why do you talk like that? Why do you say it twice? Why do you say it three times? You said it last time. I've heard it before. Oh, man. And then just anybody who tries to talk to you becomes an explosion. That's why some people cannot marry. Oh, yeah. And that's why some marriages end. Because every little thing becomes a, a rock of explosion. Blast. Blastocyst. The next one. P- person who is not prepared to do menial jobs. Like there are some people like, they are not prepared to do menial, menial jobs. That means like cleaning, sweeping. You know, such people, watch them. Dangerous people. You don't want to sweep. Why don't you want to sweep? You don't want to clean. Why don't you want to clean? You don't want to help. Why don't you want to help? Huh? We should we should we should not be like that. We should be prepared to sweep, to clean, to help, to do everything that we need to do. Amen. 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 Next one, we have almost finished. A person who is prepared to attack his father. It's a very dangerous thing. Anybody who attacks, the Bible says, Behold, my son Absalom seeketh my life. Second Samuel sixteen, verse eleven. Behold, my son Absalom seeketh my life. 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 Second Samuel 16 verse 11. Behold, my son Absalom seeketh my life. My son Absalom is now seeking my life. Behold, my son Absalom seeketh my life. Hey, it's a terrible thing. It's a bad thing. You are prepared now to attack your father. 
Behold, my son Absalom seeketh my life. Goodness. Be careful of such people. As a person next to you, will you attack your own father? Your father in the ministry? Huh? The next one, leaders, people who are worldly. Worldly. They play worldly music. They drink alcohol. They smoke. They go to discos. They have unbeliever parties with unbeliever music. These are all worldliness. You wear clothes, naked clothes. When you come to, you, you are almost naked. One day I saw somebody, I was like, look, look take everything off. There's, there's no point. There's no point. I don't know why you are wearing what you are wearing. Just take it off. Because you are naked. Take everything off and move around like Adam and Eve so that we know that we are back in the Garden of Eden. Eve has come to church. <laughs> Demas has forsaken me having loved this present world. Demas has forsaken me having loved this present world. Second Timothy 4, 10. Amen. The next one, a person who does not pay tithes. It's a dangerous person. Amen. Hallelujah. And the last is a person who disappoints you in time of crisis. Huh? When things are difficult, the other person is becoming some way. Amen. Stand to your feet, please. We are closing. Are you ready to close? You don't want to close? 